Hi and welcome to another DT TV. Today I'm joined by Peter Hooper, who's the owner of Snags Tackle in Colchester. And we're going to have a little interrogation about what he's up to. He's uh, uh, quite a stocked little water today, so I think the main key to try and get out of here is how to get a quick bite, get everything going, and hopefully catch some fish. So, hi Pete and welcome. Hi, so you right? Yeah, very well. We've got a, a, quite a vast array of bits and pieces here. So, kind of tell us what you're up to today and how you're using these bits and pieces. Well, it's very simple. I'm basically going for a quick bite. So, initially, it's trying to find some fish. I spent about yeah. two hours wandering up and down yesterday, yeah. trying to make sense of where they were, what they were doing. Um, been down here in the past and sort of seen a lot of fish showing there weren't that many yesterday so yeah. it was a case of just trying to isolate an area that looked carpy that looked like it might produce a bite after that initially it's a case of going softly softly with a little bit of bait so buy a bite there and then so that's so, the main key just a little high attraction little piece of bait absolutely. and hopefully get a quick bite exactly right i mean you can go in areas you know if you're here for a couple of days three or four days or something you might want to put a bit of bait out see whether or not you can entice them into actually getting absolutely. on the feed yeah initially take it softly softly if you've got fish in the area start introducing a bit more bait try and keep them there but go in find out if they're there first absolutely so i'm going in initially little tiny pva bags just a little nugget of goodness um, just to try and see whether or not they'll pick it up off the bottom. Um, I'll go different ways about it. I'll go either very high attraction, so using the old uh, fish DNA. Um, this is an absolute godsend when it comes down to uh, PVA bag fishing in particular. Uh, it's quite nice as well. It gives you sort of a visual area. You get a nice oil slick pop right, up off yeah. of the bait. And a big cloud effect goes on around the bottom, doesn't exactly. it? Which is all liquid food, yeah. Coming up and going down, and it's just a lovely way of doing it. So if you're using a little PVA bag and you want to introduce a little bit of bait, get the cast out there, get your rod down, get a little catapult of bait, stick it over the top of it quickly where that little slick's coming up. So you know you've got a nice little area yeah. just to induce that bite. So that's basically how I'm going about it. I use a couple of different baits to sort of try and induce the area. One thing I noticed about this lake before is there seemed to be an awful lot of fish feeding on naturals. Right. So this yeah. time around I bought, uh, you know, I bought the little uh, nuggets of goodness in maggots. So we've got ourselves a little PVA bag of maggots yeah, there, yeah? a little PVA bag of maggots. Literally just a mouthful. You don't want any more. I, I didn't really want to go any more than that. I just wanted something that was going to basically almost introduce just a tiny little bit on the bottom. I mean, yep. they're still live, so they're going to create an area about that big by the time they've actually crawled right. out. Okay, so you, you prefer the live maggot approach? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So what, what are we doing with the rig version of this and the hook bait to go with this maggot? It's very simple. I mean, I don't use maggots on, on, the, on hair or on a clip or anything like that. I basically go along with the boily approach. I prefer the boily approach. So something nice and simple. It It's a rig that I use pretty much everywhere I go, to be honest with you, but... Um, it's just a metre and a half of leg cord down to a leg clip, uh, a simple uh, overhand knot loop so I can introduce the PVA bag actually onto the rig itself and put it right. down into okay. the hook. Uh, if I'm using things like maggots that's not too bad, if I'm using things like boilies then I just tend to hook it onto the actual hook itself. What I tend to find is using just a little bright coloured stop, so like a sweet corn hair stop from the Enterprise yep. um, and a little barrel bait. Because I am going in with little baits, I use crushed boilies, I use pellets, I use maggots and stuff like that. I don't necessarily want a big round boilie sat in the middle of it. Right, so yeah. either a chop or a barrel or something along those sort of lines just to basically um, be a little a little bait sat in the middle of a little patch of bait. Yeah, so absolutely. That's basically how I go about it. I don't get too complicated with my rigs. I've been through, I read the magazines to see what they say and I operate on the, on the KISS theory basically. Keep it simple, stupid, because you catch a lot more fish. <laughs> so that's how I go about things. It's just an easier way of actually catching fish. It's also a rig that I've got very confident on. I've caught some big fish on it. I've caught an awful lot of fish on it. So, so this is a big key, isn't it? I mean, when you get asked lots of questions, hey, what's the best rig and what's the best bait, etc. And the ultimate key you said there is something you're confident in, Absolutely. isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you, when you come into carp angling, you go through a learning routine and, you know, you, everyone has to learn. So everyone will go off and they'll go and try and find what it is that works for them, the best bait, you know, the best... Um, the best rigs for the job yeah um, and what you tend to find is you go around in a big hoop you go through tying all these rigs with the shrink tubing yeah. and the various sort of additives and you know bits of fluorocarbon with bits of braid on the end and you kind of end up going around and eventually you find something that works for you and 
it might just be a case of you'll go to a water and all of a sudden you'll have a hit of fish. Yeah. And you grow confidence in that rig. That's right, yeah. I think we were talking about the Chod rig yesterday, and it's a rig that a lot of people have got a lot of confidence in. Yeah. Um, but it's not necessarily the right rig for the job all the time. The same as this Keep It Simple rig isn't yeah. the right rig for it all the time. But if you've got confidence in what you're doing, the chances are you're going to catch a lot more fish. I mean, this is the same. I mean, I've done quite, quite a few interviews with several different anglers now, and it seems to be what's coming back to me all the time is a, a lot of, particularly the highly successful anglers, is keeping it simple. Don't yeah. complicate matters. Find something that works for you, stick to it, and yeah. just carry on using it. Absolutely. Which yeah. is great advice, yes. I think, to be uh, honest. It is. I mean, now, I've kind of noticed down here as well, you had your little bit of, uh, of plastic corn on the end there. I now, I did. do know that you don't just use it straight out of the packet, do I you? You're doing know. a few little trick bits here, you are, aren't you? You're, you're revealing my secrets. Oh, I am you? indeed. So do you want to tell us all about them? Absolutely. I'm, I have a little pot of here, which basically I've, I've gone through and just robbed a few bits of various sort of plastics and pop-ups and what have you and I've taken this stuff which is your limps um, yeah liquid milk protein sweetener enhance and I mean this stuff is good enough to drink it tastes <laughs> awesome you get it on your fingers and you're there for hours but it's with the plastics it seems to actually sort of penetrate into it will it. do so yeah it, absolutely it, it gives it a real nice fruity kick so it doesn't really seem to matter what bait you use it just gives it that little bit of enhanced almost and this stuff as well i mean you can have this out for 24 hours in the water and and the flavors or the smells absolutely. won't disappear you can reel them back in they still smell exactly the same right. I mean, so i've gone to the bottom of my tackle box a few times and found bits of corn that have been in there for months on end picked them up smelt them and they still smell of and that's what you need isn't exactly it? right so it, you know i mean it is a little secret it is something that I do uh, an awful lot with the old sweet corn hair stops. As soon as I get them, I just pump them in the douse dow them with limps, and yeah. I, I know that I can go somewhere, just stick that on, and that will give me a little tiny edge over what everyone else is doing. So that brings me talking about the limps, brings me nicely onto another little maybe top tip that we can give people here that I know you do yourself which is tiger nuts, isn't it? Yeah, Tell us a little bit about that. Well, tiger nuts is one of those things that's kind of been kept a secret for quite a while now, and it's a nice little edge that not really that many people know about or use. But it's like in the preparation of tigers, you get quite a sort of sweetness off of it on the uh, waters and stuff when you boil it up. You get the old tiger nut syrup in the jars and various yeah. bits and pieces like that. But when I prep them, I basically take my tigers, get all the water out of them, I take some limps, I take five mil of limps and I chuck it over a kilo of tiger nuts, give the old bucket a shake and leave it for about 24 hours. And what happens is the limps, in a very, very similar way to what it does with the sweet corn, yeah. it actually penetrates the tiger nuts and gives them a real sweet. Stop, you've got to take. Well, as it always happens, we're just in the middle of having a good bait conversation now, and the cameraman goes and gets a take, so we run down here. Well done, Jane. Tell Thanks, us a little Simon. bit about it. How did you get it? Well, I had this one again. It was on a fish and blood barrel, mate, with a uh, little bag of pellet. So pretty similar to the tactics we were just talking about. Certainly. Quick bite stuff. Certainly. Get well, the little barrel on, get the PVA bag on. Yep. Just dropping it out in That's it. just a little bit of silt, was there? Yeah, it's about eight foot deep out there, Simon. Yeah. See a fish crash there this morning, same area as I had that other one. Yeah. Um, so yeah, as we were talking over there, had a ripping take. Lovely scrap with this one, so well chuffed. There we go, proof once again, tactics work. Well done, mate. Thanks, Simon. Okay, we're back now after that little interlude of the cameraman deciding that he was going to catch a fish in the middle of the interview. Great stuff. We almost got there with what we were talking about. We'll just finish up now and just uh, have a little quiet end chat with the tiger nuts. So literally just to recap then, Pete, we were draining off the tiger nuts, yep. uh, putting on the limps, going at five mil a kilo. Yep. Um, and then is there anything else you're sort of doing with the application side of things? Mm, with the application side of things, obviously with tiger nuts, you don't want to go too heavy. The fish. Yeah you know they don't really get any greatness out of them and obviously you can cause damage to fish using too many nuts when it comes down to the actual application of the nut so fishing it very lightly single tiger nut maybe two or three in a pva bag maybe some pva friendly hemp or hemp that's been doused heavily in salt just to basically make it pva friendly and then just using it in a very similar way to what i'm doing at the moment just small patches of bait um, fishing for a single bite at a time unless I'm there for a few days which 
doesn't really happen that often, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, bite, bite at a time, little and often. OK, right, well, Peter's given some great advice there, kind of the main key points coming out of this. You're fishing a heavily stocked water, build your swim up, fish for the first bite, and then slowly start introducing it, and then getting the fish going and feeding on the spot. So, some great advice there, Pete. Thanks very much. No problem at all.